Good morning and welcome to the Eden United Methodist Church's live stream worship service. You might notice that things are a bit different. Uh, we're working on experimenting with some different ways of doing worship given our current situation here in Erie County. And the fact that a number of people within our congregation have been uh, exposed in different ways to the coronavirus and some have become sick. So I do have a few announcements for the morning. Uh, we are scheduled as the Eden UMC volunteers to help with bell ringing for the Salvation Army on de uh, December 9th through December 12th. Please call the office to sign up. I want to encourage you to continue to send in some new pictures for our live stream worship service as well as uh, let me know if you're interested in volunteering to read, record yourself, and, and so we can insert those videos into our, our worship service. We are continuing with our Bible study, uh, not the Bible study, that's actually canceled for the next couple of weeks. We are continuing with the prayer meeting on Wednesdays at noon by Zoom, and uh, we'll continue to post our videos here on Facebook and then later on on YouTube. The trustees are scheduled for a meeting this coming Tuesday at seven in the fellowship hall. Again, if you have any questions about how things are working or concerns, just give a call to the office and we will try to answer those, those questions as best we can. We now have a, a special presentation of the Advent wreath. Hello, I am Laura Forster here in the Eden United Methodist Church. We have the tradition of the Advent wreath. In the Advent wreath, there are four candles representing hope, peace, joy, and love. I'll, I'll, I'll light the first candle, the candle of hope. Now please hear this scripture from Mark Chapter 13, beginning in verse 24. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven." And skipping to verse 32. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say, I say to all, keep awake. And the prayer today is, God of the present moment, we hear your invitation to keep awake. When hope feels as fleeting as a bird, remind us that you are ever-present. We pray that hope lingers and makes a home in our lives this Advent. Amen. Traditionally, when we light the candles, the Advent candles in church, we sing a verse of the Advent song. This is the first verse for the first Sunday. Light the Advent candle one, now the waiting has begun. We have started on our way, time to think of Christmas Day. Candle, candle burning bright, shining in cold winter night candle candle 
our opening prayer this morning. Will you please join with me? Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Jim Monroe, and I will be reading part of this morning inscription. May you be blessed as you give attention to the reading of God's word. It's from 1 Corinthians 1, 3 through 9 in the New International Version. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now uh, do our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 140 from our hymnal.
Our next reading is from Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when the fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to help, to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then? Can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever or look on us, we pray. For we are all your people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, amen. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, may our hearts, may our minds be open to what you would have us learn this day, that we would grow in your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I know things are unusual. This isn't the typical Advent. As I said uh, at the beginning of our worship service, there are a number of people within our own congregation who are experiencing either exposure to the virus or the virus themselves at this point. Things are not as they have been. I mean, if we look on the news or, or turn on the TV, I don't watch TV news, to be completely honest with you. I get most of my updates through online subscriptions, but when we turn those things on, we are reminded of what seems to be a great deal of hopelessness, of job loss due to the pandemic, of those dealing with infections because of the pandemic, and then all of the other things that just continue to go on. Our teachers who are, at least in our district, now learning how to do things completely remotely, and they are not alone. None of these things are easy. None of these things, none of these transitions are simple things for us to do. But we're entering into yet one more of those important seasons in the life of the church, and yet we remain separated. I chose this particular text from Isaiah because I think that it speaks very much to where we are and what we need to hear from God in moments like these. As I was reflecting on the fact that this is, again, the beginning of the season of Advent, most of us use this as a countdown toward Christmas, but it has its own purpose. And the purpose of the season of Advent is to remind us that God has not left us alone or to our own devices. That although things may seem bleak, God is still at work in this world. And that he promises to return. The whole purpose of Advent is, for, is to help us in the process of preparing for that celebration of Christmas, which again will look different than it has in times past. But when I look at this text from Isaiah, I'm reminded of something that is so important in terms of our faith and what it teaches us and how it is supposed to guide us. When Isaiah wrote these songs, these hymns, these poems to the people of Israel. They were in the midst of exile. They were taken, torn from their homeland, from the promised land that God had brought them to. They felt disconnected, disjointed, unable to be with family, with friends, lost. And yet when Isaiah read, wrote these words to them, he was speaking a message of hope and, and, and a promise of what was to come. And not just a hope and a promise of what was to come, but what was occurring in that very moment and in that very time. 
For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and mountains trembled before you see, since ancient times. No one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. And this is the important part. Who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. The season of Advent is also about waiting about waiting for the return of God, about waiting for the return of Christ, about waiting for that celebration that comes at Christmas. In this passage, Isaiah reminds the people of Israel that as we wait on the God who has intervened many times throughout history, the God who gave the commandments to the people, the God who brought his people out of Egypt, the God who walked this earth in flesh in Christ, as we wait on him, and on the great act of salvation that he will bring about at the end. We are called to live in a particular way. We are called to be the church. When God spoke to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, he was forming a community of faith. A community of faith which extends through Christ and is now the church. And it is that community of faith that he is called into, not just a right relationship with him, but a community that is meant to share with the world that our God has walked with us, has become like us, who understands every part of our life, every facet of the things we have experienced. He knows us. Not just because he creates us, but because he loves us so completely that he came down even as the world turned away, even as we turn away daily, he came down and fleshed and walked among us, took on our sin. This season of Advent, this season of waiting, this season of wondering is meant to remind us that God came down, that God will come again, and that when he does, he will be looking for a church that has partnered with him to bring about his message of love to a world that desperately needs to hear it. A message of hope to a world that desperately needs to hear it. A message of forgiveness and mercy to his people. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians that God has equipped us and gifted us with the ability, even in this time, to be the church. It may seem like we have no idea what we're doing at this point. But remember, we've already done this once before. It may seem like there's less and less hope. There's less daylight. That doesn't help either, does it? But God calls on us to set the example of what it means to wait. Not to wait by doing nothing, but to wait and use the gifts that he has equipped us with to care for those in need, to pick up the phone and to call a friend to think creatively about the ways in which we can serve God in our current time. I, I was talking with my oldest child about the fact that we weren't going to do a Christmas pageant this year because there's really no way that we can do it given our current circumstances. But then I said, you know, what are some other options? What are some other things that we can do? And he said, well, I can write a pageant. I can write a play. Instead of looking at it as something that was completely lost, he recognized that there was something else that we could do. When I say to us that we are called to wait, but to use the gifts that God has given us because we are his people, it means not closing ourselves off to the potential possibilities of the ministries that are around us. To remember to pick up the phone and to call loved ones. I know like many of you, we did not celebrate Thanksgiving as we did before. We used a Zoom call to connect with our family. It get, honestly, it gave us a chance to see people we don't even celebrate Thanksgiving with because we could connect with our family spread across the country. Was it the same? No. Did we miss having other people to celebrate and to share all of that turkey with? Yes but we found a different way to connect. God has equipped us for this time. 
to pray and to seek out different ways to connect with the world, to share with them the message of a God who loves and forgives and who promises to return so that we are not left in the mess that we have helped create. There is no other God like the one we serve. Isaiah says it much more eloquently than I can. There is no other God like the one we serve, the one who has called us, the one who has equipped us, the one who redeems us, the one who offers us forgiveness, the one who is gracious. There is no other God like him. And he has called each of us to partner with him, to share with the world, not just this message of love and forgiveness, but to care for those in need to remember the needs that we may not even be thinking of in this moment, but when we seek God out, we might see something new. Isaiah ended this particular passage with a very fascinating turn. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. We have been created by God. And for those of us who have entered into a covenant relationship with God through Christ, we have been called and equipped to share with this world this message of a God who intervenes. This message of a God who loves so deeply and so compassionately that he has given all that is necessary for us, all that is necessary for us, to live and to serve him faithfully. So as we wait as we count down the days to Christmas, which will be different than any Christmas we've celebrated before, as we wait and as we hope for a vaccine to be produced so that all might receive it, as we wait, as we hope for an end to this pandemic, as we wait and we hope, we also wait and hope in the expectation that our God has not left us alone, that he walks with us. That he equips us that he has promised us that one day when he returns, all things will be made right. So as we enter further into this Advent season, the season of waiting, the season of remembering, the season of hope, may our hearts, may our eyes, may our minds be open to new ways to share God's love to serve God, to share God's love, to serve God until he returns. We are his people. Amen. Our next hymn is Have Thine Own Way, Lord, number 382.
touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold for my being, absolute sway. us into a time of prayer with God and with each other. As I said before, we have families within our congregation that are, are dealing not just with exposure, but also active cases of COVID. And so I'm going to invite us to, to pray not only for them, but for all of those who are both providing care, um, our doctors, our nurses, for the people that make hospitals run, which is far more than just doctors and nurses. But also invite us to pray for an end to this pandemic, for a way through. For many people, as we approach the Christmas season, it seems bleaker than it has before. And so I want to invite us to pray that even when we struggle, that we remember the message of hope that we have and that we can offer that message to others. So let us join together in prayer with God and with each other. Good and gracious God, although we find ourselves in a very different and unique situation than ones we have faced before, we know that you are a God who has walked with us. You are a God that has intervened on behalf of his people when they cry out. You are God of all the nations. Enable us as your people to be messengers of hope. And in those moments of darkness when we wonder where you are, Lord, Remind us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up those among us and those in the world around us who are dealing with COVID infection. And God, we pray for your healing touch and mercy upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up we lift up doctors and nurses, first responders, who are ensuring that those who are ill receive treatment, not just for the virus, but for all the other things that happen in our lives. For their service, Lord, we give thanks. Lord, for your blessings, hear our praise. And God, just as we seek protection from this virus, from the brokenness of the world around us, for our own families, for our own loved ones, God, we pray again for those who care for the sick. Protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, for those in places where they cannot leave, where the virus is running rampant, like nursing homes, prisons, God, enable your church to find ways to care for those in need. And God, we pray for the safety of those who cannot leave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
God, continue to work in and through your church. Remind us that you have equipped us. Remind us that you have called us. Remind us that you love us. May we be a beacon of light in the darkness. We ask all of this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, praying as he taught us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to invite us now to give back to God from what God has blessed us with. There are many different ways for us to do that. We can give by using our apps, the Tidely app, PayPal, and, and DonorBox are all available with links on our website. DonorBox does not require an account, but Tidely and PayPal do. You are also more than welcome to mail your checks in to the church. They are being collected and counted regularly. I understand that this is a difficult season for giving, but it's also a traditional season in which we give. May we remember that we give because God has given to us. And we do it so that we can serve him together with the church. To care for those in need. And to share his message of love. Let us join in singing the doxology. we give you thanks for all that you have blessed us with we pray that you would use these offerings for the building of your kingdom in and through us we ask all of this through jesus christ our lord amen our final hymn for the day is change my heart O god my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me what I pray. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, oh Change my heart, oh God, make 
make it ever true Change my heart, oh God May I be like you As we prepare to go on with our life today, may we remember that we are God's people, that we have been called and equipped to share his message of love with the world, to dedicate ourselves in service to our God and King, so that all may know of the hope we have in him until he returns. May we go with God's peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week, I invited you to take pictures of yourself holding out your hands to touch the screen as we close out our worship service with Shalom. If you're able to do that, I encourage you to do so and share those pictures with us if you're willing to let us share those with the rest of the congregation. Let us join in singing Shalom. Shalom to you now, shalom my friends, may God's 